In this video, I'm going to walk through the Windows Server 2022 installation, uh, and then some basic configuration, and then I'll join this server to an existing domain. Um, I'm going to do this on Hyper-V, but you can do this on VirtualBox, um, you can do it on a physical machine, VMware, it doesn't matter, the, the installation process is the same. And you can download a trial version of uh, Windows Server. I think it's 180 days the trial is good for. And as I made this video, the Microsoft website is, the download page is not working for the, the ISO download. So once they get that working, I'll put a link to it in the video notes, um, but let's just get started. So on Hyper-V, I'm just gonna Create a new VM, and again, you don't don't worry about this because these steps would be a little different for VMware and VirtualBox as far as creating a new VM. But uh, this video is really just for the installation process of Server 2022. Uh, so pick your language, keyboard input, I mean, straightforward basic stuff. Click next, click install, and install doesn't actually install it yet, it just starts the setup process. Okay, so your choices are the standard edition, and in the default, it defaults to the core, which is no GUI. And then you got the standard desktop um, version, which is which provides the GUI. And I mean, I recommend the GUI version, the desktop experience. Um, standard works well if you are installing a server for a very specific role, such as it's going to be a DHCP server, it's going to be a domain controller, um, something that doesn't have a lot of third-party programs installed on it. Um, there are some compatibility issues with third-party programs, but Core works very well for specific use cases. Um, standard and Data Center, uh, Microsoft has a, a good document that lists the differences. Um, it's pretty minimal. It kind of comes down to licensing. Like Data Center, you can have unlimited uh, virtual machines, and I think on Standard, uh, it's limited to two uh, virtual machines. Um, but I'm going to go with standard. Oops. I had to restart because I, I clicked on the core version. I wanted the desktop experience. Accept the license agreement. And this is a brand new install, so there's nothing to upgrade. You'll have to do a custom install. And for the disk space, it's going to detect how much uh, free disk space you have. And by default, it'll just use the entire disk. Um, if you want to break this up and have um, you know, a primary disk and a secondary disk, one for the operating system and one for programs or um, just storage, you can click New and then just give it whatever space you want. And then it'll create additional partitions. Um, for the operating system disk, I recommend at least 100 gigabytes. Um, the minimum is 32, but that's just to get the uh, operating system installed. Um, once you start installing Windows patches um, and third-party software, you're going to eat that um, 32 gigabytes up really quick. Um, but for production systems, I, I would go with at least 100 gigs because, like I said, Windows patches and installing software, it's going to start consuming a lot of disk space. So I'll just leave it with what I've got here. Again, you can create additional partition uh, just by clicking new and giving it whatever size you want. And then I'll start going through the install process. This could take a few minutes, so during these, during the process when it's doing some installs, I will pause the video. Okay, once the installation process finishes, it automatically reboots, 
and then it brings you to this screen here where you need to provide uh, an administrator password and the install is really quick it took maybe five minutes to complete and that's it so now you can log in and do some basic configuration Once it gets signed on, the server manager screen will pop up. And my Hyper-V um, virtual switch is DHCP, so it's automatically grabbed an IP address. Um, but I'll change that to a static. And you'll get this pop up about wanting to, to download the Windows Administrator Center. I'm not going to do that. Um, so the server manager. Um, it's kind of a centralized place to view your server, what's running on it, roles and servers. And then on local server, it gives you a little screen of everything that you can quickly configure. So I'm going to start with the computer name. You're going to want to rename your computer. So just click on, uh, the, this is the name that it automatically assigned to it. And you can click on it and click change and then give it a name um, click OK and then it's going to ask you to reboot and I recommend rebooting I've seen uh, several times people try to skip that reboot and then the server act kind of funky or not behave as expected so when the operating system prompts you to reboot. I recommend you to reboot. Uh, I'm going to come back to work group because I'm going to add this computer to the domain once I get through the rest of these. Um, but the Microsoft Defender Firewall is on by default and you can click on this and change it but I recommend Leaving this turned on, uh, you may need to adjust some of the settings for um, applications and various things to work correctly, um, but I'm going to leave it as is for now. Remote management. Um, this is important if you do remote PowerShell work, um, have another server that uses WMI, uh, such as a monitoring tool um, to query the servers or an inventory or patch management systems. Uh, those, those programs a lot of times uses, uses WMI uh, to, to manage your servers. So by default, it's got this turned on. Um, if you don't use any of those, uh, PowerShell Remote or WMI, um, I would probably go ahead and turn this off, but I'm gonna leave it turned on. Uh, remote Desktop, this is if you want to use RDP, um, the remote, remote desktop protocol. So if you want to remotely connect to this server from your workstation, uh, you'd want to turn this on. So just click on that and then click allow. And I would leave the desktop with network level authentication enabled. When you turn this on by default, it's gonna put the administrators group in there and you can add additional uh, users or groups in here. Um, so the IP address. So we'll come into the NIC, and like I said, my my Hyper-V switch uh, automatically gave it an IP address, but I want to change that um, because I'm going to add this to my uh, Active Directory domain. So I need to make sure this IP address is on that network. And you also typically want to have servers with a static IP address. There's no need for servers to be changing because um, typically it's a static resource so you don't want that IP address changing it's it's not a huge issue um, if your DNS is set up because you typically would access resources by its host name um, 
but there are times when you may need to, to access it by an IP address. Um, some, some systems um, use reverse DNS, and in that instance, you would want um, static IP address to set up. So I'm going to come in here and come into IPv4. I'm going to go to properties, and then I'm going to change this to a static IP that's um, part of an existing network. So this will be 2168. And these IP addresses will be different depending on your networks and what you're using. And my default gateway is 192.168.100.1. And when you're joining a server or computer to a domain, you're going to want to point the, the server um, to, to an internal server that can resolve your internal domain name. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to join it to the domain. So my domain controller, which is also the DNS server, is 192.168.100.10. And that is all I need. Um, you, you would typically put in an alternate DNS server, but this is a test domain. Um, I've got another domain controller that's also DNS, that's a dot .11, so I could put that in here as well. Um, that's beneficial in case your primary goes down, you've got a backup DNS server. So now that I'm part of my internal network, I should be able to open up so I've opened up the command prompt. I can use ping, and I'm pinging another server uh, on my network, and the dot .10 is the domain controller. So I ping it. I've got network connectivity on my network. Um, you can see I could use um, NS lookup to test the NS resolution, and there it resolved google.com to that IP address. So that verifies that this computer uh, IP address settings are a DNS resolution working. Okay, so the Ethernet is configured. Uh, last installed updates never. Um, and I'm going to skip the Windows update process because I don't, I don't think you want to sit through watching Windows updates. But I do recommend before putting a a computer into production that you make sure it's got it's all patched with the latest security updates um, the Microsoft Defender antivirus it's on um, if you're using uh, a third-party antivirus you probably want to disable this um, I'm gonna leave it turned on uh, feedback and diagnostic settings uh, it's all turned off by default I recommend leaving it turned off unless you have some very specific reason to turn this stuff on, uh, i.e. enhanced security. Um, this can be a little annoying. I sometimes turn this off for administrators but leave it on for users. Um, a lot of times I install a different browser such as Chrome. So what that does is that just affects Internet Explorer. You'll get these security warnings, this right here, when you open up Internet Explorer. Um, it's really probably not a major issue anymore because the server comes with edge which doesn't seem to be affected by the enhanced security it looks like it's a legacy setting that still only affects Internet Explorer so probably just leave that on unless you've got something using Internet Explorer that's uh, causing issues with the enhanced security configuration uh, time zone uh, this is really important. Make sure you set the correct time and time zone or you will have um, issues joining to a domain. And you can see down here the time has changed to the correct time. Product ID, this is where you will enter your product key. I'll skip this for now, but uh, you'll want to do this so Windows is, is activated. So those are the basic steps. I've, I've went through um, all these basic steps. Uh, I, I do recommend you create a checklist 
um, to make sure you go through because you may have some additional things um, like I said you install third-party software um, you may have different third-party agents that need to go on here um, security agents like an inventory asset management system for patching uh, logging who knows every, every organization has different programs they installed in servers um, you may need to add the computer into an inventory system um, you may need to add the server into your monitoring tools um, you may need to back up data on the server um, so there just could be all kinds of things that you need to do so I, I recommend having a checklist uh, build checklist and you go through every time you spin up a new system um, but the last step I'm gonna do is add this to the domain so I'm gonna click on workgroup I click change and I'm going to add this server to an existing domain. And my existing domain is ad.activedirectorypro.com. <clears throat> and if my, if you remember back in the DNS settings, I pointed my, uh, or the, the Ethernet settings, I pointed my DNS to my internal DNS server. If I pointed that to, you know, Google or some external DNS server, I wouldn't be able to join this to a domain because it can't resolve my internal domain. So with that set, I'll click OK. It's going to prompt me. And these are domain credentials. So welcome to the domain. Click OK. And then I'll need to reboot again restart and once I restart the computer is part of the domain and then I'll be able to log into the server uh, with domain credentials okay it's rebooted I'm gonna click other and then I'm gonna log in with a domain account and you can see here it says sign into AD Pro um, if I wanted to log into the uh, local computer I would do a dot and then a backslash and then you can see sign into server. Now it's signing into this local computer and you'll need to use uh, local accounts. Um, I could not sign into it like this with an AD account. But I want to sign into the domain. You can see it switched back to sign into AD Pro, which is my domain. So I'm logged in, I went back into server manager, local server, and you can see domain is uh, my domain now. It's got my ethernet IP address. Um, and one important additional step, um, once you add a computer to a domain, it's gonna put it in the default computer's container. Um, if you use group policies, um, you may need to move your server into you know, different OU, maybe like a server's OU that has specific policies applied to it uh, because they, they won't get applied if they're just sitting in the uh, default computer's container. So that's it. The, the installation process is really very straightforward um, for server 2022. Uh, the process is um, very similar to 2016 and 2019 server um, and as I mentioned once Microsoft gets their website fixed I don't know what they're doing I will put links uh, in, in the video to the ISO for downloading uh, the evaluation of 2022 and that's it um, if you enjoyed this video uh, please subscribe to my channel thanks for watching